Hello, welcome to another module of this course, Microwave Integrated Circuits. In the previous module, we had covered uh, the topics related to three port microwave devices like circulators, T's and uh, power dividers. In this module, we are going to cover four port devices. Now, one thing about four port devices is that uh, they can all be matched at all ports. Uh, they can also be reciprocal and they, they can also be lossless, <coughs> excuse me, without, uh, so the mathematics related to the four port devices permit them to have all the three properties, uh, which was not the case for the three port devices. And all four port devices are known by the general term couplers. So, unlike three different types of uh, devices for three port devices like uh, uh, circulators or T's or power dividers, all four port microwave devices are known by the general term couplers. So, let us uh, discuss a little bit more about couplers. So, couplers are represented by this symbol. There is one port which is called the input port, there is another port which is called the coupled port, there is another which is called the through port, one which is called the isolated port. Now, so the basic uh, point is that there will be a signal reaching the input port and a part of that will travel to the coupled port and a part of that will travel to the through port and no part of the input signal should reach the isolated port. So, in olden days, uh, the reason we have, now you might ask me what is the difference between the coupled and the through port, uh, there is actually no difference in modern day couplers, but uh, in, in when couplers first began to be manufactured or designed, uh, it was that there was this, this coupled port, the energy appearing at the coupled port was kind of coupled to it rather than direct connection as that existed in the through port, the energy was would have to travel over a gap or something like that. So, one example of a coupler, a very simple waveguide based coupler is Suppose, suppose we have a waveguide with a partition in between and suppose this is our input port, let us number this isolated port is usually represented by the symbol 2, coupled port is represented by the symbol 3 and through port by the symbol 4. Now, if uh, here suppose this is 2, this is 3 and this is 4. Now, if there is a signal coming at uh, port 1, then a part of that signal will travel like this and another part will travel like this. Now, the distance between these two holes or coupling holes are so adjusted that when these a signal passing through a hole coming here and another signal passing this way and then up coming here, when they meet, they add constructively. So, constructive interference and now a part of this signal entering this hole will also come back to this point and here the phase differences are such this is basically pi by 2 phase difference. So, this signal travel travels undergoes a phase diff change of pi by 2 while traveling from here to here and then again a phase change of pi by 2. Finally, when it reaches back at this point there is destructive interference and hence port 2 is isolated or decoupled. But then at port 3 where constructive interference happens there there is addition of power. So, some amount of this input power will reach port 3. Now, with this uh, 
let us see what are the various types of couplers. One term that is frequently associated with couplers is what is known as a hybrid coupler. Now, in a hybrid coupler, the division between the coupled and uh, coupled and through ports is equal. So, coupled and through ports receive same amount of power. So, in other words, that is why this hybrid coupler is also known as a 3 dB coupler, that is equal division or half of the power goes to input power goes to the coupled port and half of the input power goes to the through port. The other way of classifying uh, couplers is uh, based on a property in the S parameter matrix and based on this we can have two different types of couplers. One is called a 90 180 degree coupler and the other is a 90 degree coupler. Now, in a 180 degree coupler, the phase difference between the coupled and through ports is 180 degree and in 90 degree, the coupled and through ports have a 90 degree phase shift, that is the difference between them. Now, some examples of 180 degree coupler are magic T. Uh, then what we call rat race coupler, tapered line and then some examples of 90 degree coupler are coupled line, branch line. Now, of this uh, we will study in detail this uh, magic T coupled line and branch line. So, let us start with the magic T. Now, the construction of a magic T is something like this. So, it is like uh, E plane T superimposed with a H plane T. Now, we knew that for an E plane T, suppose this is port 1, 2, 4 and 3. We know knew for a E plane T the phase shifts between the port 4 and port 3 will always be 180 degree, but when power is inputting uh, say port 2 there will be equal phase shifts. So, basically by a combination of this and by suitably uh, arranging the suitably uh, designing the lengths of these T branches we can obtain an S parameter matrix for a magic T uh, as shown here. So, the S parameter matrix for a magic T
So, from the E plane T basically what we got was S41 is equal to minus S31 which is equal to 1 upon square root of 2. So, this is from the E plane T and from the H plane T we got S42 is equal to S32 which is equal to 1 upon square root of t. So, this is from the h plane t and that is why by combining both these we get uh, this kind of uh, s parameter matrix and as we can see port 1 and 2 are isolated and uh, similarly port, uh, port 3 and 4 uh, they are also isolated uh, sorry. Uh, yeah, port 3 and 4, this value and this value is also equal to 0. So, that is why port 3 and 4 are isolated and port 1 and 2 are isolated and the remaining are either through or coupled. Now similarly, if we, uh, if we would like to discuss the branch line hybrid, so that is an example of a, so this uh, magic t was an example of a it was an example of a 180 degree coupler and uh, this branch line uh, hybrid coupler is an example of a 90 degree coupler the construction of a branch line hybrid if we just go by a schematic diagram is like this. It consists of four transmission lines connected in this format, each having length lambda by 4, where lambda is corresponds to a particular frequency and characteristic impedances of the transmission lines along the vertical, this vertical transmission lines is Z2 and uh, the characteristic impedances of these horizontal transmission lines is equal to Z1. Now, we can uh, use what we call an even odd analysis uh, to, uh, to analyze this uh, hybrid. So, just uh, to give you a hint of how to do this analysis, uh, let us see the what is this even odd analysis. Uh, you see you can you know this is the schematic diagram that I had just drawn and this line uh, represents these two this z1 and this two lines represent the transmission lines having characteristic impedance z1 and these two lines represent the transmission lines having characteristic impedance z2. <coughs> now, assume that there is an imaginary line which is cutting through these circuit along a horizontally ok. So, this is the imaginary line which is cutting through the vertical uh, transmission lines horizontally. Now, suppose there is a signal A 1 appearing at port 1, then this A 1 can be considered as the sum of two sub signals A 1 upon 2 and plus A 1 upon 2 and at port 2 where no signal is appearing that can be considered basically that is 0, 0 input at port 2. Now, this can be considered as the summation of two equal and opposite signals A 1 upon 2 and minus A 1 upon 2. So, when they sum up the net 
input appearing at port 2 is 0. If port 2 is the isolated port, so anyway it should be isolated that is no signal should either come in or come out from this port. Now, because of this symmetry that is present in this circuit when we cut it half along this line. Assume the case when we have only A1 upon 2 at port 2 and A1 upon 2 at port 1 that we call as the even mode and the case when we have A1 upon 2 as the input at port 1 and minus A1 upon 2 as the input at port 2 that we call the odd case. Now, since this is a linear circuit the net output or any parameter that we obtain in this circuit will be uh, the superposition principle will be valid and hence the net output at any port will be the superposition of the outputs obtained due to the even mode or the odd mode. Now, consider when only the odd mode is present that is port 1 is fed by A1 upon 2 and port 2 is fed by minus A1 upon 2. Then, because of this equal and opposite nature of the input signals, we can assume that the voltage along this horizontal line is 0, because if this is plus, this is, this is minus, this is plus and both are equal in magnitude, then the voltage along this horizontal line should be 0. And based on this, we have drawn this equivalent circuit for the odd mode. So, here we have an short which is represented by this line and this short is represented by this line. This short is now lambda by 8 in length since we have cut it in half and z 1 remains the same, but this lambda by 8 line has a characteristic impedance z 2 and there is a load z 2 z 0 connection. Similarly, in the even mode when the inputs are equal at both port 1 and port 2, this line along we can assume the voltage along this horizontal line is this horizontal line is basically open. Here it was a short because the voltage was 0 now because the voltages at these two points are the same for the even mode hence this point is basically floating there is no current passing through it. And based on this, we have this equivalent model of uh, for the even mode, which is exactly the same as the odd mode except that instead of short, there is an open here and there is an open here. Now, how do we analyze this equation, this uh, circuit? <coughs> as I said, any let us consider that A1 is the input at port 1 and B1 is the reflected wave at port 1 and suppose S11E and S11O are the S11 parameters for the odd even mode circuit and the odd mode circuit. Then the total reflected wave at port 1 will be the combination of the contribution of the even mode and the odd mode and hence we can write B1 by this equation which in turn translates to that the overall S11 parameter that is B1 upon A1 is equal to this equation. Similarly for B2, now in the case of B2 we can assume that B2 is because B2 is the reflected wave at port 2. So, B2 is a combination of the total uh, of the input of the even mode and the odd mode. Now, for B2, for the even mode, the to voltage that appears at port 2 is A1 upon 2. And for the odd mode, the voltage that the signal, I beg your pardon, I should not say voltage, is the normalized voltage. The normalized voltage that appears at port 2 is minus A1 upon 2. So, then the net B2 should be the sum of the summation of the contribution of A1 upon 2 and minus A1 upon 2. Hence, B2 is written like this 
and S21 that is B2 upon A1 is given by this equation. Now we can similarly derive the condition uh, equations for S41 and S31 in terms of the S41 and S11 parameters for the even and odd mode circuits. The other thing that we note is that these even and odd mode circuits consist of three different circuits. One is this open branch, then a length of the transmission line and again an open branch. So, these three are in cascade and because these three are in cascade, we can apply the cascade parameters to find out the equation. So, these are the cascade parameters. Now, for a simple trans length of transmission line, we had earlier seen that the cascade parameters are given by this matrix and since the length of the of this uh, transmission line is lambda by 4. So, we should be able to deduce from this matrix, go from this matrix to this matrix. Similarly, the cascade parameters of the open or shorted lines can be given by these equations. And finally, as I said the overall cascade parameters <coughs> will be the multiplications of the three cascade parameters of the three circuits. The first one being either an open or shorted stub, the second one is a length of transmission line and the third one is again uh, either an open or shorted transmission line. And after doing this multiplication, the overall S uh, overall cascade parameters or ABCD matrix of the circuit for both the even or odd mode is given by this equation. So, minus here represents the even mode plus here represents the odd mode. Similarly, here. Now, once we get the the cascade or ABCD matrix, we can convert those ABCD parameters to the S parameters from this equation. Now, this equation is given in the book by Pozar, the derivation of this conversion is also given. And then once we do that, we will get the, once we do that, we find out the S parameters for the individual even and odd modes. From there, we can find out the overall S parameters of the circuit using this equation that I just described. Now, first thing, we saw that the coupler needs to be matched at port 1 and we know, we have just seen that S11 is given by this equation and also port 2 needs to be isolated from port 1 from which we have got this equation. So, if both S11 and S21 have to be 0, then S11E and S11O have to be individually equal to equal 0. And on performing this equation, on solving this equation, we get a relationship between Z1 and Z2 like this. Now, for a 3 dB coupler, <coughs> Here I should mention this Z0 is the characteristic impedance or the matching impedance that is the impedance to which the coupler is assumed to be connected at all the ports. Now, for a 3 dB coupler we should get Z1 equal to Z0 upon square root of root 2 and Z2 equal to Z0. If we plug in these values then we will see that the 3 dB condition that is equal power division between the coupled and through ports is satisfied. Now, similarly proceeding similarly, we can also find out the S31 and S41 parameters. So, the S31 and S41 parameters using the relation here we have of course, substituted in place of Z2 we have plugged in this value and on solving for S41 and S31 using these equations, we get the values of S41 and S41 is equal to minus J Z1 
z1 upon z0 and s31 is equal to minus whole square root of minus 1 minus z1 upon z0 whole square. Now these uh, equations and these derivations will be found in the in the notes accompanying this uh, presentation accompanying this course. So, in case you have missed these in the lecture, you will be able to find it in the uh, accompanying notes or PPT slides. So, if we go back to the slides uh, on the monitor, so the overall, so we have found out all the parameters that is S11, S21, S31 and S41 and then using those parameters, uh, we can find out the complete S parameter matrix of a coupler. Now, I would like to mention something here uh, at this point. Uh, say you have a coupler which is symmetric. So, you might say that we have 16 parameters in a coupler because it is a 4 port network and we found out S11, S21, S31 and S41. Then how come I can uh, find out all the other parameters? So, here my notation is like this. Because of this symmetry, I can say that S21 is equal to S34. And then because it is a reciprocal device, this should also be equal to S43 which in turn should equal to S12. So, just by knowing S21, I can find out 3 more S parameters. Similarly, S11, since it is matched at all ports, S11 is equal to S22 is equal to S33 is equal to S44. Further, S31 is equal to S24 is equal to S42 is equal to S13 and finally, S41 is equal to S32 which is equal to S23 which is equal to S14. So, you see just by knowing the these 4 S parameters of a symmetric of a symmetric uh, coupler, we can find out all the remaining S parameters. Now, coming back to our discussion on uh, couplers. So, we have uh, studied the basic uh, construction of a coupler of a branch line hybrid and we have also found out the S parameter matrix of that uh, branch line coupler. Uh, let us see what happens for a for a 3 dB case that is when the branch line coupler provides equal power division between the coupled and the through ports. So, there we saw that Z1 is equal to Z0 upon root 2 and Z2 is equal to Z0. So, S41 becomes equal to minus J upon root 2, S31 becomes equal to so, this comes from this equation S31 becomes equal to minus 1 minus so these are the values of S41 and S31. So, then our S parameter matrix should uh, become like this or complete S parameter matrix for a 3 dB hybrid should become like this. As we can see, the phase shift between uh, 
2 and uh, between 3 2 this s uh, 3 2 and say s 3 1. So, between this ports when suppose we assume an input at port 3 then the outputs at port 2 and port 1 are 90 degree phase shifted or say there is an input at port 1 then the S 1 3 is equal to uh, 1 and S 1 4 is equal to j. So, we can again see that if we have an input at port 1 then the outputs at port 3 and port 4 are phase shifted by 90 degrees. So, in this uh, lecture we covered uh, two types of couplers. The first was uh, the an example of a 180 degree coupler which we call the magic T and the second was an example of the 90 degree coupler called the branch line coupler or if the if there is equal power division between the through and coupled ports then it is called a branch line hybrid. Uh, in the next lecture we will cover another type of coupler another type of 90 degree coupler called uh, coupled line couplers. So, thank you very much.